ah, we made it. We're here. So uh, how's the volume? Can you hear me in the back? Yes. Cool. All right, um, so my name is Maureen. Uh, I am a graduate of Epicotus. And for those who aren't familiar with the program, it's a four-month full-time intensive web development course for people who are looking to change careers into the field of web development. Um, while I was there, I um, I'd signed up on HTML and CSS previously, and then in class we did JavaScript and Ruby on Rails, so it's full stack. Uh, and in our last month, we do internships. And I did my internship at Notch 8. Uh, Matt Clark's here, and he was mentoring us. And he challenged us to, to do a talk, uh, and to prepare a talk in our internship. So uh, it's really exciting, because I'm, I'm here sharing my intern talk with all of you. Um, it was really a kind of fun experience, and it led me down a lot of really interesting, uh, interesting paths. Um, and currently, I am working at, at Epicotus as our outreach coordinator. So for all of those people with jobs out there, if you've considered hiring junior developers or would like to learn more about it, or would like to learn more about our internship program, there'll be some more information uh, further down the line. You can always reach out to me, too. Um, so my previous career, a little bit about me, uh, I Grew up playing tennis. I absolutely love this sport. That led me to coaching tennis with at-risk kids. Um, they were truly amazing people. Um, and it was really kind of cool being a player and then trying to communicate to, to children how, like, how to win, how to be successful in tennis, and what sort of expectations uh, an eight-year-old who's just learning this sport might have. Um, so that's my background. And then when I was coming into Epicotus and some things I, I really got out of it in a very general sense is that I really like test-driven development. I found something to be really, really comforting about it. And this talk has kind of helped me pin down why that is. Um, and going into Epicotus too, I was really drawn to the fact that it was a pair programming environment. I really like, like working with people and I like learning in social situations. And um, you know, these are just kind of interesting things that I've been thinking about as I've been developing this talk, too. Um, so the name of my talk is, Anna Kornikova was a great tennis player. And you say that around tennis players, and sometimes they're like, uh, wh what are you talking about? Like, that's, that's like not really true. Um, so I would like you to leave here today knowing this, that yes, she was a great player. Uh, but it'll take me a little moment to kind of make these arguments. So. First off, you know, when you're thinking of tennis and programming, my goodness, what on earth do they have in common? You know, why sports to begin with? Um, for me, growing up playing a lot of sports and, and having learned sports as an adult too, um, I think that learning a sport is a lot like learning a language. It's a lot like you know, learning any discipline. You just have to learn the fundamentals, get used to it, practice it. Put yourselves in, in different environments where you are learning and doing things. Um, I think learning, playing sports is a lot like learning new languages too. If you know one, there's a lot of correlations that help you learn another one. Um, for example, one of our classmates was a fencing instructor. So for me as a tennis coach, we're like, hey, let's trade lessons. And it turned out that he had some natural built-in skills as a fencer that helped him learn how to play tennis. And I had some skills, vice versa, it worked out the same way. Um, so it's kind of interesting that, that like your body can be a tool just like your mind is when you're learning to program. Um, I think additionally, and this is my bias as a tennis player, that tennis has an additional connection and it's really on a, on a mental level. Um, you may recognize this from a meme. Uh, but tennis and, and the way it's always been explained to me like when I was little, when I was first starting to play matches, is that it's really, really mental. Like You're relying so much on, on just your ability to focus and stay present. And uh, people from other sports kind of look to tennis players. And they really try and figure out like what makes them unique and what makes them special. Um, and something that I learned from a very young age, too, is that as a tennis player, like when you go out or when you, sorry, for me, watching tennis growing up, you would see these people go out, and they were absurdly young, 18, 19 years old, playing tennis in front of crowds of like thousands of people. And you really start to notice um, that in those situations, like in these big professional situations, those players are really alone and exposed. So think of Anna Kornikova. She was like 17 when she started playing major tournaments. 
a teenager like out there on the court like everyone's looking at you they're waiting for you to make, make a mistake um, there's so many stories of like, really really high profile uh, catastrophes in tennis um, Andre Agassi once was winning a match and then Bill Clinton walked into the stadium and he lost he just lost the match after that it's like well how does that happen um, and if you ever read Malcolm Gladwell, he wrote a piece on a woman, Yana Novotna, who was points away from winning Wimbledon and self-destructed. And he had to like, m ruminate on the, whether or not that was a choke or uh, uh, whether it was a choke or not. But there's just these really, really interesting cases where it's, oh my goodness, like catastrophe on the court. Like, how do you come back from that? How do you deal with that situation? So for me, you know, in my humble amateur status, you know, even in those situations, I deal with that. You're like, how do I compete alone with, with no one else with me? You're not allowed to have a coach with you on the court. You can't talk to anybody during the match. You can't get any feedback on how you're doing. You have to really rely on yourself completely. Um, so, so how do you prepare for that situation? How do you make sure that, that things actually go well and go the way that you want them to? And so much of it comes down to just, just preparation. You know, practice. If you're having difficulties with a certain skill, then go out and hit 100 forehands and see if it gets better. Um, set strategies for dealing with tricky situations. Try and maintain your focus. You know, one of the, the hardest things to do in tennis, because like points can go by so quickly, is to like not get distracted by something going on next to you or like, not be thinking too far ahead of yourself. Um, there's also like a reset strategy that you do. So for example, if you are finding yourself getting distracted, you say, oh wait, hold on, let me center again. And like, I'll do something where I look at the strings on my racket and see, okay, are they straight? And I touch them all and like, yeah, they're straight. They're always straight, but I still touch my strings to just kind of reset and be like, I'm here in this moment playing tennis. Um, and if you can do all those things and you can get and execute, then you're able to win matches. Um, but saying all these things, again, it should sound a bit like programming, like especially for students at Epicodus. Like we, we were practicing our coding skills every day, like just write CRUD functions all day long, and then you're really, really going to know those well. And refactor, and you're really going to get better at writing dry code. Um, there's all sorts of options there. And then if you're think, talking about focus, um, one thing we did at Epicodus was we had standing desks. Stand up and move around so you can kind of maintain a focus on what you're doing. Uh, hit reset. So if things are really going tough, like our reset button was, hey, like ask a question and ask a question that maybe you could Google and try and get yourself unstuck from a problem. So again, correlations there and like how you would practice and how you prepare. Um, but I have to kind of go back to like coaching and you know what I would say to myself if I'm really trying to win a match, like how do I coach myself? Or when I was working with young children, how do I coach a child to help them be successful in this environment where it's so easy to lose focus, to get out of touch with what's happening right in front of you? Um, and this is a picture of Anna Kornikova when she was a very young girl, and this is her very famous coach, Nick Boliteri. And I see this picture, and I just think of, oh my god, like what is he asking her to do? Like, Nick Boliteri was kind of a, a, a large figure in tennis. He was training young kids to be number one in the world. He wanted them to be the best they could be. And in my mind, that I would never train a child and say you're going to be number one in the world. Because realistically, they're going to be lucky if they play in college. Like Learning how to play a sport and actually succeeding in a sport, uh, there's a really big disconnect. It's not that many people who are going to succeed, who are going to be number one, who are going to win major tournaments in the world. So there's a certain amount of managing expectations that coaches have to do. And there's a certain amount of like setting a realistic goal for a child or an amateur player when they go out to play, it, it's simple enough to do. And, and for me, the best advice I ever got was to, to just really focus on a single point at a time. Never look too far ahead. Never think, oh, if I just win this next point and then I win the next one too, I'll be fine. Anytime I did that to myself, I like collapsed. I couldn't think. I couldn't focus. I got distracted. Same thing goes like when you're actually in a point 
it's really easy to like, get ahead of yourself. You're running out wide for a forehand, and then you think, I'm going to have to run back that way, and you pull back too quickly. It's like, no, no, you got to focus and stay right there. Um, and I have this picture of Andy Murray. He's doing a post-match interview at Wimbledon. And when I think of um, athletes and, and mental strategies and how they really keep mental focus, I also think of two um, of their interviews after matches. And people say, so how'd that match go? You know, what, what were you thinking about? And they're like, oh, it's just, just about playing one, one point at a time. You know, don't get too far ahead of yourself. Try and get better every day. Um, and as I was working on this talk, it was really funny because a friend of mine who's a Ruby developer just kind of, he wrote to me and said, you know, I think being successful is about discipline and it's about the desire to improve. And I thought to myself, mind blown, like, wait a minute, that's, that's strategy in sports. Like, you don't get too far ahead of yourself. You just focus on the problem at hand. And, and he was talking about test-driven development. Limit yourself, like, really keep your problems small and contained so that you focus on the here and now and don't get too distracted. And as a beginner, being already three months into Epicotus, I was like, I understood test driven development, I thought, but now I realize, no, 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 I wasn't getting it. I wasn't getting the fact that it was a winning strategy that was mentally going to help me focus and prepare for what I was trying to do. And so it really gave me like, this really calm sense. Everything felt really clear and wonderful when I realized that. OK, back, back to Anna, back to Anna. So I really like talking about Anna Kornikova because she's a person who's kind of gotten a, a bit of a bad rap. Um, sometimes there, people are only remembered for the things that they're not able to do. So in Anna's case, uh, I bet you could maybe guess how many singles tournaments she won. Any guesses? Zero. Yes, she didn't win any. Oh, whoops, that's this slide. So she never won any tournaments, any singles tournaments. She ended up ha having quite a reputation, so much so that in the World Series of Poker, they named a hand after her. Uh, so that an offsuit ace and king has a reputation also of never winning. So they said, oh, that's an AK. Uh, and so it's lovingly now referred to as an AK in some circles. But if you played poker, if you played cards, you know that you can win with ace, king, of, uh, even if they are off suit. It's a really powerful hand, but people kind of have selective memories. They only remember the bad things. And I bring this up in, in a discussion on programming, too, because there's a lot of really high profile programming projects that don't go very well. Um, Cover Oregon being one, the affordable health care. You know, there, there's this rap out there that, oh, you know, if you try and start a web development project, it's not going to go well. Uh, and, you know, maybe test driven development is one thing that can kind of keep us on track, focusing on one thing at a time. And I think, like, this is something that I would say to a client, too, like, hey, programmers, in a way, kind of work like athletes. They need to deal with one problem at a time. So it's a little bit harder to look at big ambitions like becoming number one or building the best site ever for my particular idea. Uh, it's really this step-by-step this -step process where you want to keep really focused on what you need uh, in the moment. So yeah, she didn't win any singles tournaments. But just to kind of show that Anna Kornikova was an accomplished person and did have skill, she got up to number eight in the world in singles. Not too bad. Definitely indicative of the fact that she had mental capabilities of being a star tennis player. She just never quite got over that final hump of you have tons of pressure, you have tons of people looking at you, and you're not winning tournaments? Like, how, how terrible. Um, so that, that's the TDD side of this discussion. So I'm about to talk about pair programming, and I think you can maybe predict what information I'm going to give you now. Uh, and this is, this is, again, to kind of build up Anna Kornikova's reputation. She was a really great doubles player. She was a successful doubles player. She got ranked number one. She won 16 tournaments. And that's just a reminder that, you know, we can't only remember the things that people don't succeed at. We got to remember the things that they do succeed at. And for me, being someone who likes tennis and also kind of coincidentally loved pair programming, uh, it's kind of been fun for me to compare playing doubles uh, to pairing um, and what kind of successes those things can bring. And when you think about it, um, there are 
super similar. And with the doubles uh, partners that I've had, um, when I was applying Epicotus, I actually thought of how pairing must be a lot like uh, playing doubles. Uh, it really takes good communication. You need to be able to talk with someone and work through problems together. It really helps if you know what your pair is strong in and what their weaknesses are. You can kind of protect them from their weaknesses and allow them to shine in their strengths. Uh, really important in tennis to give positive feedback to your pair, and that comes in the form of a lot of high fives and good jobs and yeah, way to go, like we got this, like a lot of coaching kind of happens there. Uh, same thing in pairing, like you kind of have to give positive feedback when you're working with a person. It certainly helps if you share a goal, um, and I've been hearing more and more stories about how focusing and pairing really go well together. Um, with our experience at Epicotus, you know, we left everything uh, away from us. You know, turn your cell phones off, can't be checking Facebook because you're sharing a computer with somebody. So it really helped kind of just focus on the problem at hand. Um, and I've been hearing from more senior developers that they really find pairing to be uh, helpful when they're really trying to get something done because that keeps you on task and keeps you just focused a little bit more in the moment. Uh, so. Again, these are the lessons that I've learned while being a tennis player, learning how to code. As a summary, for me, it really was a, this mind change that test driven development is a discipline. It's a lot like a winning mental strategy. Just want to focus on one thing at a time. Um, and then that pairing can bring success to individuals who like aren't superstars. Like they can be uh, excellent programmers. Pairing can kind of improve their their results. Um, and of course, Anna Kova was a great tennis player. And as a caveat, maybe she, she should try programming. <laughs> uh, and one more laugh, another wonderful shot of uh, this is Taylor Dent hitting a serve, but it's epic. I just I love this one. <laughs> cool. Any thoughts, comments? Any other athletes in the room? Does anyone feel like? There's like this similarity between sports ball. Sports ball, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Wimbledon. Watch tennis, yay! World World Cup is not overshadowed by Wimbledon at all. World Cup is dead. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, thank you.